Hey guys, D2 here. Um, so, a few of you already know this, but about a month ago, uh, Fire Mirror Powder and I signed with a new sponsor called Trick Esports. Uh, they also sponsor another uh, a number of other uh, esports teams as well, and we're very excited to be with them. And as part of our agreement, um, we're going to be making some guides for them. So about a week and a half ago, I made a guide on Oil Rogue, uh, which I did for them, and they posted to their Facebook site, which I will link below. Um, but I decided it would be a good idea to have on YouTube as well. So um, in this video, you will be seeing a guide uh, about Oil Rogue. Um, I do talk a bit fast, and I stutter a bit, which I'm doing now too. Uh, but working on that, trying to get these better. But I do think it's very educational, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So yeah, enjoy. Hey guys, D2 here, and today I'm going to be doing the first in a series of guides um, about Hearthstone. Um, a lot of them will be about decks, some might be about other things, but um, yeah, so today we're going to get started with uh, Oil Rogue, or like kind of the new age Miracle Rogue. Um, that's kind of, it kind of took off about, you know, two months or so ago, and really kind of changed the game and really altered um, the, the post-GVG. Uh, GVG being goblins versus gnomes, that meta uh, pretty significantly kind of threw a, like a monkey wrench into like the, the circle of meta and uh, I think to the benefit of the game really um, really kind of threw things for a loop instead of having you know the same boring you know circle well, this counters this and then it's like a triangle and this counters that um, but let's just get to it um, so how did the miracle or oil rogue how did rogue come back uh, to be strong again after it got nerfed basically twice um the most recent being the gadget and auctioneer nerf um so what happened with the old miracle rogue is that you had things like gadget and auctioneer oh well, gadget and auctioneer was the main thing in the deck and then you um you basically got gadget and auctioneer off and you got to do some like a bajillion things in one turn using preps and just cycling through your your whole deck and in particular if you got a gadget and conceal off then, as long as they didn't play Lothab, you could, you know, come back from a deficit. You know, you could clear their entire board while not losing any cards because you're cycling the entire time. Um, you could just, you know, get really far ahead in the board by just, you know, you know, cycling through your, through your deck and doing a lot of damage at the same time. And then maybe you can seal again or something. But the whole point was it was a really good comeback mechanic and it was also a good kind of finishing tool as well to have the gadget on the board. Um... But the nerf to 6 made it a little bit harder to include something like Conceal the deck, because by doing so, um, what you're doing is you're waiting until turn 7 to really get it off, or you're doing prep, uh, Gadgets and Prep Conceal on turn 6, which is still a little bit late, especially if you're going to be using that prep up on something on Conceal. Um, and now you don't have a prep to really get back into the game uh, if your opponent has built up a board by then, which it's, you know, by turn 6 they probably got something pretty significant on the board. But to make up for that nerf, um, there is Tinker Sharp's Oil, and which is why this deck is um, often referred to as the Oil Rogue rather than you know the Miracle Rogue, uh, because there aren't those huge turns anymore. But in return, you have this huge uh, you, this just this card that gives you so much utility uh, with the double blade flurries in there. You can really wipe out any single board, and having that extra damage on it um, rather than Using something like Lady Poison, or you can use in conjunction Deadly Poison and get you know a six, uh, a six damage Blade Flurry off. Or um, and it, the point is, you there's so many more ways to buff your weapon to get these huge Blade Flurries off and to really catch you back up on the board, and that's a huge deal. Um, and so that's step one of the utility, probably the most commonly used utility. Um, the other way that you can use sync. Uh, Tinker's Oil is that you can just you know put a lot of damage on. If you have a minion on the board, all of a sudden they have three more attack. Now you're doing now that four uh, mana spell or whatever you want to call it, four four mana thing. Um, if you combo with something, say like prep, now it's one mana. Now you're doing you know six damage for just one mana, which is in, pretty insane. And so that's another way you can utilize the card um, and really get burst through your opponent. Um, so that made it so you can run things like sprint um so basically you're just drawing as many cards as you want because you know you're going to come back with something like uh, oil whereas um in the olden days you're using things you know like backstab just your backstabs just your eviscerates just things like that and it really wasn't enough if you weren't getting those cards back um even if you were using sprint um 
So these days, uh, there's a lot of variants in this rogue. Um, not everyone runs the Gadget and Auctioneer. In fact, in the last couple weeks, uh, people have been going back to having double sprint in the deck. And um, as, as has always been the case with Miracle Rogue, um, and nowadays Oil Rogue, and then people don't like to call it Miracle Rogue, it, um, there's a lot of variations you can put in the deck. You know, there's always a, a five or six card difference. Um, you're always going to have basically the basically the cards you're almost always going to have are two backstabs, two preparations, two deadly poisons. Just going down the list there, two eviscerates. Um, I would say almost always blood mage. Um, at probably at least one fan, uh, double SI seven agent. Um, you're going to have at least one oil, um, at least one drake, uh, and then. Yeah, from then from there on, it's like everything is a little bit. Um, oh, I, I I didn't mention sap. At least one sap usually, because sap sap is a really nice uh, tempo card. But other than that, um, things are a little bit variable. Sometimes you don't include the far seers. Uh, the shades are a little bit. Um, I I was gonna say my flavor, but a lot of people are playing it. So, um, shredder can be substituted for violet teacher, for instance. Um, at tiki, but sometimes you want to be more aggressive. Um, Lotha is very good, but not always. Um, Gadget and Auctioneer, like I said, sometimes you take it out for a sprint. Um, one card that's typically in the deck is the South Sea Deckhand, because it really helps you um, combo with other things in the deck. If you're playing an aggro deck, uh, he can be removal. If you're playing against a control deck, he can combo with Tinker's Oil and just, you know, that's five damage for one man essentially. Well, comboed with something else, but, you know, with the Tinker's Oil and the, and the, um, the uh, South Sea deck end. If you have a, a dagger already up for five mana, now you're doing what, nine damage, which is pretty insane. So there's a lot of different uh, cards you can put in the deck. Um, I've kind of grown partial to this one, um, although lately having seen the double sprint in action, that might be something that I uh, switched to. But uh, for today, we're just gonna run with this, um, and just I'll just go back through the list again and tell you why certain cards are in the deck. Um, Starting with backstab. Backstab is um, it's there for two reasons. Um, one, uh, obviously it's super cheap, and you can just remove the stuff. So if you're playing against aggro, it's really really great. If you're playing against control, um, it might it's not as useful um, as far as the damage it deals to minions. But what it helps do is um, provide you with combos. Like a lot of the a lot of the cards, as SI seven agents such as Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, you need that combo. And then you'll just throw it away. Um, to, you know, just to get the combo off. And other times, you know, like Azura Drake, getting the extra damage in, like Azura Drake uh, backstab onto a Prowler Shredder, for instance, that's a nice way to get rid of the front half. Um, it comes with Gadget and Exineer. It actually does combo with Sprint as well, because uh, sometimes Sprint, you have too many cards, you have to just throw something away. So it, it's, it sounds stupid, but like being able to not throw away your better cards and just being able to backstab something is nice. And then also you can just, you can, actually clear something after using your sprint for seven mana or four mana whatever the case may be you can actually you know remove stuff while drawing you know all the cards that you want so that's what that is for prep work prep um it at first people were reluctant to put in the deck i'm talking about three months ago um because there just wasn't enough um the people felt like it was getting it was trying to get too much tempo and but sacrificing too many cards. But um, playing through the deck, people realize that you actually have plenty of cards um, unless you get really really unlucky and just draw both preps um, and no way to draw cards. So prep is really good with um, gadgets on auctioneer. Obviously, obviously it's really good with sprint. It's amazing with Tinker Sharp Soil. Um, great with fan. Great with Azure. Something like Azure Drake prep fan. Now you're doing essentially like a, a consecrate for zero mana. You know. Um, and, and it only costs one card because the fan uh, draws your card. So it's like a, basically a zero mana consecrate that doesn't hit your opponent's face. It's it's pretty amazing with with uh, spell damage. Um, so yeah, the prep is it's just so versatile. One of the best cards in the deck, and you're you're really trying to use it. Um, you can use it with anything, obviously. Uh, you really don't want to be using it with deadly poison um, unless you have uh, Gats and Oxygen in there. But other than that. Um, you can use it with flirt, blade flurry. Uh, the most efficient uses of it, obviously, where you get the bolt, your three men off, is the fan, um, the sharp sword oil, and the sprint. And it's not to be the the extra mana that you save is not to be taken lightly. It's just really really nice to get that off. Deadly poison is just an amazing card. It always has been. I mean, I can't imagine it always not. I word that really poorly. It, it always has been, and it probably will be for the foreseeable future. 
Um, it's just extremely efficient. Um, worst case scenario, you're paying three mana to get like a three, get your you know, uh, fire war axe or you know a power mace or whatever. Um, best case scenario, you're you have your dagger already up and you're comboing other things and doing great things. Double blade flurry is there because you have uh, four ways to buff up your dagger and you really want the consistency of having double blade flurry and being able to clear your opponent's board. Uh, you don't have to save it; you can just kind of use it. Sometimes you want to save it if you know that you're going to need both, but um, like you can sometimes just put spell damage on the board and clear your opponent's uh, minions. Uh, Viscerate's always been great. Um, nice cheap removal. Also can do damage to the face. Um, sap, sometimes you want one sap. Um, I used to run one sap. I switched back to two. It's just really useful. And a lot of times uh, you need it in certain situations where you have no other way to deal with your opponent's board. And forcing them to do the same play they just made, like say they played a five cost minion doesn't seem like the greatest thing but you you sap it away and then now you set up your board you pl maybe play a minion onto the board and now you can deal with it whereas before you had to go out of your way or maybe, maybe you just couldn't deal with it at all but um uh usually you have to kind of use way too many resources to deal with it uh so having the second sap is pretty nice especially since you're basically going through your whole deck anyway um blood made stalanos is just it's pretty amazing um you know Spell damage for really cheap, and you get to cycle through your deck. Fan and I is really good with a spell damage, also really good with prep. Um, for Farseer, is just have a little bit of consistency as well as a little bit more healing against those aggro decks. Shade, I have two. Typically, you run only run one, but I just like have the consistency of having an early game um, and having more threats. And against things like Warrior, which is one of its worst matchups, uh, you really want to be able to get something on the board that can deal damage. Uh, the SI7 agents are just really, really good. Um, they're great against aggro. Um, there's their minion you can put on early against control. Um, even against like you know a mid-range matchup like Druid, it's nice to be able to use that to have that extra damage to you know take up some of their bigger minions. Tinker's Oil I talked about for a little bit earlier. Uh, Shredder is just there to be annoying, to be a minion that sticks in the field that you can combo with Oil. Um, you can substitute with with Violet Teacher, but most of the time people run way have ways to deal with all the one ones on the board because of all the all the aggro that's typically found on ladder. Um, so the one ones don't actually matter as much, whereas Prowler Shredder it's just kind of it's just way too sticky is the thing. Um, and T Kill Bot is there just for obviously it's there um, to survive against things like Face Hunter and other aggressive decks. Um, but in addition to that, sometimes um, it allows you a le little more freedom. Um, say you're playing against, you know, just a mid-range deck or even some control decks that, you know, just ha happen to get the upper hand on you. The, the antique heal buck can just buy you a little bit of time and make sure you're not um, going out of your way. Because sometimes if they have a certain, say, you know, a druid has, you know, say you're at 14 against a druid. Um, or not 14. Say you're at, uh, I don't know. Say you're at... Um, 15 against a druid, right? And he has, you know, uh, uh, what, what's that 2 4 thing called? Um, Keeper of the Grove. It's Keeper of the Grove on the board. Normally, it's like it's kind of a waste of time to clear that minion. It's just, you know, it's a 2 4, who cares? Um, but if he has combo, if it's turn 9 or later, now you're worried about combo, now you're worried about dying. You throw up the antique heal bot, you're fine, you don't have to worry about that. So now you're not going out of your way to clear a minion that you really don't shouldn't be worrying about. Right, so it's basically like, it's kind of like, um, when you put this is a kind of a different, this is a tangential subject, but when you put pressure on your opponent or vice versa, when they put pressure on you, sometimes you have to go out of your way in order to clear their minions, in order to do, you know, because you're afraid of certain possibilities they might have, and that kind of um, side track, sidesteps that that possibility where you're not really having to go out of your way to clear the minions, just kind of, okay, I'm, I'm healed, I'm fine, I'm not going to die, I can just do whatever I want instead of, you know, wasting removal or wasting damage um, that could be needed elsewhere. Jira Drake is great, draws your cards, cycles your deck, has low spell damage, usually you run two. Lothab's um, really good for setting up later turns, um, kind of also getting something sticky in the board. Um, it's sticky because they can't really use removal that well to clear it, uh, so then maybe you can... Uh, Pair it with uh, Sharp Soldier later. Gadgetson talked about it already. Um, the reason why sometimes the reason why I like it instead of Sprint, um, although I can see the argument both ways, is that Gadgetson is another minion on the board, 
and sprint isn't and it's just another thing that your opponent has to deal with and if you have it on the board it's like you have to deal with it it's, um even though even though it's nerfed once you get it on the board it's still the same threat obviously on the board as is as the five um mana gadgets in so your opponent immediately has to deal with that and sometimes it acts as you know um it kind of can screw up your opponent's turn because if he doesn't deal with the gadgets and all of a sudden they're just going to lose the game. Um, so yeah, let's just, now that we've talked about that, uh, let's go through some of its matchups. I will uh, pull up Hearthstone right now. And, uh, okay, I'll just stick this one to the side really quick. And since I can't, it's hard to remember all nine classes off the top of my head, so I'm just going to flip to the tabs here. Um, Okay, so let's go through these matchups. Um, Druid, it's um, pretty even matchup. Um, I think it's a little it's a little bit better against the uh, Ramp Druid because it gives it gives the Rogue more time to operate and anything that's big you can just kind of sap away. Um, and there's just not enough pressure on the Rogue and uh, there's not enough. I mean, usually the Ramp Druids don't really run healing touch because or things that really heal you a lot. Um, because they have the big minions to kind of hold off the aggro, but against Rogue, you just kind of sap the big guys. Uh, if they get, even if they get a huge board, like at, by that time you probably have a huge blade flurry anyway. So even if you don't have sap, you can probably blade through the entire board. Um, as far as mid range druid, that's a pretty even matchup. Um, sometimes they can burst you down. Sometimes they get the wild growth, and you can't really deal with it in time. Um, other times, you know, you just have the perfect amount of removal and card draw and you're able to just slam through their stuff and just pr uh, have too much damage. It's kind of like, it's almost like a game of chicken a lot of ways. It's midnight druids because um, a lot of times it's like, you know, druid, if they have their combo, if they have, you know, innervate combo, they can just kill you from such high life hurdles and rogue's kind of the same way. It's like, well, if I have, you know, tinkers plus flurry plus deadly poison, I can kill you from almost anything. Um, and it's kind of like, well, I just hope a lot of times, um, and as long as you're, if you're not way ahead, um, and can play around those things, sometimes you have to be like, well, the only way I win is if I just assume that you don't have those perfect cards and just go for that. So a lot, a lot of times it's kind of a game of chicken, hoping your opponent doesn't have the perfect cards to kill you. Um, Hunter, mid -range Hunter, Rogue is pretty good against, um, it can kind of deal with those threats and it has the time to set up the, let's set up the kill. Uh, Face Hunter is a little slight underdog. Um, the damage just comes in way too fast, and um, it, I mean, if you're using like even if you get your NT kill bot, which is really really nice by the way, you want, you definitely want that card in the matchup. But using five mana to heal while they're probably kind of doing more damage to you um, is a little bit. It's not the best situation, uh, but it's definitely winnable, especially because um, it's not like they kill you super fast. They kill you maybe like you know turn six or seven or eight or so, just because they get a lot of damage early in. Like they they'll get like the first you know, you know ten or twelve or fourteen or so damage before you know Rogue has even time to react. But once they start reacting, the damage starts slowing down. It turns into just a bunch of hero powers and you know one charge of face and it dies because the Rogue can easily remove it. So if you can just hold on, you can kind of race them with some huge blade flurry turns. But overall, it's a little bit of a unfavorable matchup for Rogue. Um, Mech Mage is pretty uh, pretty even matchup, slightly favoring the Rogue just because one good Blade Flurry just ruins the the Mage's day. Um, but if you if you don't run, run if you don't draw into your healing, then the Mage can certainly just burn you down um, after even after you cleared their board. Um, and sometimes the threats just pile up too much. Like if they played Doctor Boom, you have to clear it normally because you don't run Big Game Hunter. Um, and sometimes they get something like Anson, Archmage Antonidas. Mage in general is kind of like one of those decks that can win against anything. Make made him saying, um, and uh, yeah, but it could definitely run over the rogue if they don't have the right answers early, and that sometimes can happen if you draw into your tinkers or your e five drops really early on. Um, but if you do get that that removal, then um, you can you can kind of snowball. The, the game can kind of snowball either way. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, if you don't get blade flurry or you don't get that early removal for rogue, as far as um, freeze mage is concerned, rogue is actually pretty good against it. Just because there's ways to, there's so many more ways to burst. You're not relying simply on, you know, Leroy or, you know, or what other the other damage that you had. Um, you can just kind of burst from nothing, over and over again. Like you can go, you can just, you know, hit with Tinkers and Flurry, and then Flurry again later, and then just kind of deal with all their stuff. Um, 
and they also you also have healing a lot more healing with the anti kill boss. So once they Alex you, you're not completely dead. Um, it's definitely a much better matchup. Um, Freeze Mage used to be one of the ways that you counter Rogue, but now it's I would say Rogue definitely have above 40% chance in that matchup. Paladin is one of the better matchups for Rogue. Um, just everything is small enough to get flurried. Their bigger minions get sapped away. And Paladin just doesn't kill Rogue fast enough. Um, and their threats... Usually, Paladin... What's scary about Paladin against other matchups is that their board kind of builds up. And it's hard... It just temples you out of the game with your their board presence. But once the board is gone, um, Rogue just doesn't have... Uh, or that they don't have that kind of ability to, to finish the game with any burst. Um, and their hero power is directly countered by rogues. Like, their two mana is countered by rogues, one mana essentially, because you're only using half their dagger. Fan, it just, I mean, it's one of the better uh, answers for muster for battle in the game. Um, you don't get the life justice, but you do draw a card, so it's kind of, it's pretty similar. Whereas other matchups, uh, or other classes kind of have trouble with that muster for battle. Priest, another decent matchup for Rogue, though not as good as the old Miracle Rogue versus Priest. Um, definitely Priest has ways to kind of um, uh, deal with some of the minions, whereas before Neil, um, before didn't have those kind of answers. Um, and this Rogue operates a little bit more slowly than the old Miracle Rogue, so Priest has a little more time to kind of set up its options, but overall still a favorable ma matchup for Rogue. Um, the mirror matchup kind of comes down to damage, um, and if you can get your healing off, and it's just kind of it's kind of like the old Miracle Rogue, except not quite as um, not quite as uh, cutthroat. You know, you have a little more time to set up your turns, a little more time to pull off a sprint. Sometimes in the old uh, matchup, if you you know get an assassin's blade or hit, whacking the face. Um, or if you get a gadget in your gadget in auction year off, you're basically just lose the game, or like a conceal, because there's no way to flurry away. Um, whereas now you can kind of flurry anything that's concealed away, um, if there is such a thing. Um, and if the board builds up, it's not quite as bad. So it's a little more back and forth rather than uh, being super snowbully like the old matchup was. Um, Assassin's Blade is something I didn't really talk about. People like people like to talk about Assassin's Blade, um, or like to think about whether they should include it. Um, I would say that it's nice to include it when you don't think it's going to get Harrison, is the one thing. It's just like the one consideration to think about. Um, Shaman. Uh, it's Rogue's always just been good against Shaman, um, other than the backspace Rogue, other than the aggressive Rogue from before. Rogue has always been good against Shaman. Um, it just kind of out-temples it a little bit. Uh, the hero power doesn't really mean a whole lot. A lot because you can do things like spell power fan you can do things like you know just flurry it away and um yeah the, then there's a lot of the stuff in shaman that's like like the removal it's like okay but um it doesn't really matter too much to the rogue because they're just they're just waiting to kill anyway um you don't see Zoo very often these days, but Rogue is good against you know whatever Zoos are remaining because they don't have crazy Undertaker turns. Um, and like if they ever, even if they have eggs and they get the the Nubians off, you can just flurry them away or eviscerate them. Um, Handlock is also not as common. Um, still more common than Zoo these days, but uh, it's and it's still slightly favored for the Handlock over the Rogue. But the Rogue has these like crazy Blade Flurry turns that are possible. Um, and Handlock, the fact that the Handlock has to kind of text to worry about other uh, decks means that Rogue has a little bit more leeway um, with dealing with it, because there's not quite as many threats. Um, as far as Demon Lock, um, it's kind of a strange matchup, because they're, they're kind of just both removing things as they go, and then if Rogue can just burst them down at some point, then they're fine, but um, like, if you know, it just kind of goes, it just depends on the swingy turns, but I would say that matchup is still slightly favored for Rogue. Um, Warrior is a bad matchup for Rogue. I would say my list is pretty is reasonable against it because of the double shade and things like Shredder, which are hard for Warrior to deal with. I would say that Violet Teacher is much easier for, Ro for Warrior to deal with. Um, but yeah, overall, the fact that Warrior has so much... Um, basically armor that you the rogue has to get through and the fact that they have just so much removal so anything you get in the board you can kind of just kill off 
um, between its weapons and this. Like, the weapons are usually enough to kill most of the things in the rogue deck. Um, and. And then they have the extra removal as well. And then, okay, and that's neutral. So, there, there's all your matchups. Um, I guess one thing I didn't mention was that you can run um, Dr. Boom just to have another threat. Um, another, like, big minions. Um, I've seen. Um, what's his name? I've seen Trayvon's Galax as well. Uh, so sometimes you want that. You just want that one big minion just to throw your opponent off. Like they're they're so busy clearing things like, you know, uh, Azure or like you know whether it's File Teacher or Shredder. It's basically everything in the Rogue is a threat because the, it can get buffed, um, or it can just do even just a little damage it does is kind of like one step closer to killing you. Um, so they, they go all the way to clear those, and all of a sudden they don't have removal for your big mean. So that's sometimes a viable strategy as well. So we're going to get into a game here um, at rank 6. Um, there's still some pretty solid players at this rank. Uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like Legendary, except um, there's uh, some of the players a little bit subtle. Some of the plays that they make a little bit some optimal, but we should be able to find something good here. Hopefully we win this game, <laughs> so we don't provide a bad example. Alright, so here's the mirror matchup. Um, so this is kind of tricky, um, because this is a tricky mulligan. Because I know I'm 100% keeping this. Um, because the early, if you can get it done early, it's really annoying for a rogue to deal with. Um, I'm considering keeping this because if he plays his own shade and I draw a prep, I can go with this and just clear it off, no problem. Um, the fan is something that you don't want to keep usually against rogue. It's just it's reasonable against Violet teacher, uh, but otherwise it's not very good. But the fact that I have this already, like this is a combo that's really really nice, um, but you don't always get that combo. Um, I think okay, I'm going to keep it just because these cycle anyway. So worst case scenario, I'm just going to cycle, and it's not that it's not bad. I'm still going to be diving on turn two and not playing blood mage though. Okay, I didn't want to see this. I wanted to see some minions. Um, the biggest thing is against rogue, you actually want to see minions. So this is kind of a little bit of a maybe too reactionary keep might be. But I think it's fine. And the fact that um, I, I do have a lot of minions in here, so it's reasonable to keep something like this. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely curved uh, well. Uh, I got a little bit lucky with this draw. But I had several turns to draw it, so it's okay. Or it's, it's, it's fine. Um, the problem with playing this right here is if he goes um, Deadly Poison, attacks this, and Blade Flurry, it's actually a really, really good value for him. So I, if he has the right cards, it could be in a little bit of trouble. My eyes are open. Um. So here I could do something weird like this and this, but I think I'm gonna save the prep for another day and play this and just. It's basically like you can't assume you can't always assume your opponent has the perfect cards because if you're always playing on the perfect cards. Um, you might just, you know, you're not gonna ever get any, get any, uh, you know, traction to the game. Okay, so it looks like he doesn't. He probably. Oh, never mind. We see a prep here. Oh, prep sap. Okay, so that's that's a reasonable. That's a pretty good turn by him, I'd say, because it's annoying for me to have to go back and play this. So he's he decided to go for the the tempo play here. Um, I do have a reasonable answer for it. Um, okay, so I have a few answers actually. Well, I don't actually have a few answers. I could, so I could prep fan. Deadly poison, kill this guy, but then this guy wouldn't die. Um, I could. Thanos prep fan SI. I could have Thanos prep fan and fan, and then that would clear the whole board because I could just stagger this guy. I think that seems like I think the Thanos prep fan is something that's really really good. So we're gonna do that and then just see 
but we draw. And we might go for the second fan, and we might go for the SI7. Um... Yeah, I think I kind of like the fan here, just because it clears the board. Because otherwise I'm taking, like, with even though I get an extra 3-3 three, three on the table, I'm not clearing the 3-1, three, the 3-1 three, just changes to my 3-3 three, three anyway. Um, and this is a pretty decent amount of pressure that I put on the board this way. Also, I'm drawing a card. So, like, yeah, I'm drawing a card. Um, it's the same result, because if I, I need to clear the, the Vile Teacher. Um, because that's a threat. And if I clear the Violet Teacher in the 3-1 trades in here, well, it's like the same, it's like the same exact, uh, result. Um, assuming he does that trade. If he doesn't do that trade, it means he has a better play to make. Uh, so that's bad for us, obviously. Um, and then, so that way, just, we just draw a card and make the same exact play. Only problem is we don't now have Fan, but Fan isn't the greatest in this matchup anyway. We're gonna, we really want to be cycling to our Blade Flurries. We picked up some high value minions here. The problem is that we're not going to have the time to really pl to get them off. So now we really want to get something like um. At this yeah, at this point we want to get uh, our our spells. So he just okay. So I I guess that's reasonable because getting your dagger up is kind of nice. Um. I actually kind of like this play. And then doing this, and attacking face. I get the damage in. Um, I'm actually going to kill this now, so it doesn't, it can't aid in some of the trades here. So, he, ne in order to like deal with these, he needs something like SI7. Um, he can't use any spells. So there's no real reason to kill this. Um, because he's not going to play any spells, and if he does, that's actually good for me, because he's essentially wasting his turn. Um, if he uses a backstab here, that's like his entire turn wasted, right? So, um, okay, that's, that's, that's again nothing. Okay, so he had he basically just had to play this, this like, mostly useless minion. Um, now I get to have 11 damage to the face. Um, can I do this with the, I think I have to, well, I don't have to play Flurry. So my options are I could face tank this, SA7 that, I think I really want to Flurry here. The problem is, well, actually how much damage do I have? I should really be counting lethal. So I have 11. And then plus maybe yeah maybe I just go face here maybe I just go double deadly and then go face. Um, I'm definitely doing this. If I go double double deadly go face, what is that? Um, five ten. Or five ten fifteen and twenty one. And he's pretty close to dead. Um, I could also just oil here. But that's a little bit scary. I could potentially die, maybe, if he has the perfect cards. I feel like I'm far enough ahead that I don't need to do that. Actually, I'm just going to do... No. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to way down. So now he, he has to both clear my board and heal, which is pretty much impossible. Yeah, okay. So there you go. Um, that's an example of a rogue versus rogue game. Um, it's basically, so in that game, um, the way I won was having a really nice curve, which is, you know, a little bit lucky, but um, it's fine. Uh, my, my keep wasn't, my keep was kind of like, you. it was a little bit reactionary, but the fact that I'm playing against rogue means I kind of had to be reactionary. I, I needed uh, answers for his threats, and just having the spell damage plus the fan is like, that's the best use of fan I'm ever going to get with spell damage, and it ended up working out for me, especially with the prep coming. Um, getting the shade on the board early is really nice against rogue, because uh, they have to, it's really annoying for them to deal with. Um, like, they, they can't just blade flurry, you know, a, one minion, just go waste of, of resources. Um, and he tried to go for the the um, 
the tempo play by sapping uh, my shredder. But um, what happened that turn again? So, but then I was able to kind of get the tempo back by playing the Lothab. The Lothab really screwed up his turn. Um, and uh, yeah, the double fan was was good because I was able to clear the board, which is nice. And so he used he used his prep to sap, but I used I just got the temple right back by using my prep with the Thanos and the the spell damage. Um, and then I I was able I basically I advanced my board even though I didn't play anything other than the Thanos because my shade grew, which is nice. That's why shade's nice to have in in certain decks like this. Um, then after that, playing the the Lotha was pretty huge because I was able to really just shut shut him out of the game and by tempo and all of a sudden my, my shade was able to attack i was able to get that damage in without being punished whatsoever um and then from then it was like by that time um i think i chose the right play but there were plenty of plays that i could have made to um uh to really shut down the game um i just basically that was basically the safest one because if i left minions on the board there is a possibility he had something like um, Deadly Poison, Tinker's Hit Face, Flurry, which would have been, I think, lethal if it hit the right minion. Um, so yeah, I was going for like the, I just, I definitely can't die here, um, and he's probably dead the next turn. I went for that kind of play. Um, so yeah, that's a you, that's a classic uh, miracle or a, a an oil rogue versus aura rogue mirror matchup. And I uh, hope you enjoyed today's guide. See you guys.